There's certainly been one winner during COVID-19 and that is EdTech. My next guest is in the business of EdTech, but she feels very passionately about subjects that people don't talk about. We talk about the successes of EdTech, but what about the challenges that are being faced? For example, how many people can actually afford e-learning for their children at a time when we have seen salaries being cut, jobs being cut, what does it mean for young parents and the difficulties they're facing in teaching and educating their children, whether it is multi-devices or just being able to afford the fees for e-learning? Joining me to talk about that and a lot more is uh, the co-founder at Eduara, Akanksha, who is joining us. Akanksha, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us here on uh, Startup Central. You know, so like I said, we talk about the successes of uh, behind EdTech, how it is booming, is one of the best businesses to be in at the moment, it's a COVID winner, this, that and the other. But there are a lot of challenges that are being faced, especially by the users of e-learning. Most EdTech platforms are not affordable. So what I do think is that in the current environment, EdTech is, of course, everyone's talking about how it's booming. But people don't really talk about how the requirement of the people is to have uh, ed tech in a manner which is affordable for everyone and which is available to exactly their specifications. So when it comes to ed tech, we have to realize that technology is an enabler and it's about reaching as many households as possible. And that's what technology lets us do. But when it comes to pricing, for example, that becomes a barrier. When it comes to languages, that becomes a barrier. When it comes to different boards and different schools, a lot of things become barriers for students, even the kind of resources that are offered by EdTech. So I think it's very important to remember that education should be thought of as a right and not as a privilege. And so it's very important that every child gets the same quality education all around India, no matter their socioeconomic background. And that's why Eduora is offering education to students all around India at a price of $9.99 a year. And along with all of this, we also offer education in English and Hindi so that people all around India can access their education very easily. And it's not only for people in big towns or in the metro cities, because those are the people who already have access to good quality education. So when it comes to tech, we need to talk about how to reach people who, because of their circumstances, don't get that access very easily. And before, as you spoke about, um, it's there's COVID going on, there's a pandemic going on around the world uh, because of cost cutting. Uh, a lot of people are being laid off work. A lot of parents are losing their jobs. And while education is something that everyone prioritizes so much and people go above and beyond for their children, just to educate them, it's very disheartening as a parent when you cannot afford to give your child the best. Today on the cover of Times of India, there was an article about how many parents around India have lost jobs because of which they have to shift their kids out of English medium or private schools and shift them to government schools. And as a parent, I'm sure that must be heartbreaking. And at a time like this, I think the most important thing is to give one platform to everyone in India where they can get the same quality of education, which has actually been curated by, the, by teachers from the top 10 schools in India. So even if parents are burdened on their pocket and even if there are bad circumstances around them, no one should ever feel like their child is losing out on something as important as education. And so everyone should be provided with that. I take your point. I take all of them, but and let's take them one by one. You're doing it in English, Hindi, you're charging 999 rupees, you're going to smaller towns. Um, Akanksha, when you do this, can, you, can I ask you how you're making education more affordable? Because the entry point, unfortunately, for quality education is expensive, whether it is um, the syllabi, whether it is the teachers, uh, how are you making it affordable? So the entire idea started off when uh, me and my sister one day were talking about how in today's day and age, everything's available on OTT platforms and how you get like a library of movies and TV shows all in the price of 99 rupees a month or say 9.99 rupees a year. And you get everything that you need at the click of a button all in one place. 
And when entertainment has become so accessible in today's day and age, why not education? And that's, that is the need of the hour. India has the largest youthful population in the world. And if you can provide Indians quality education at the right price, I think that's something that can make everyone win and it can really bridge the gap between India. So today in India, there are two Indias we're living in. There's one country, but there are two nations. So there's one country where you and me live, where there are malls and there are shopping centers and there are huge private institutions. And there's another India altogether where um, there's smaller schools, there are villages, there are children who study under neem trees and that entire, you know, setup. And to bridge the gap between both, I think education is the only thing that comes in the middle. And that's where this vision was born. And to make this vision a reality, we had to work very hard to change people's mindsets. So a lot of people thought that how can you provide a high end quality product for uh, an affordable price? So that was a very big battle we had to deal with to convince people that to, to you know, uh, focus on our vision and to make it a reality, we have to make sure that the quality of the education provided is at the top level and at the top grade. So if you look at the kind of work we're doing, there are Hollywood style animations that explain the videos to the students. There are other supplements, which are like, there are um, eBooks, which are kind of like revision guides. There are test papers, which have multiple choice questions and which have, um, you know, long and short questions. There are past papers, which people normally buy at like, you know, the local store, but it's all available to you. And there are also mind maps. So that was basically our vision. And to make it a reality, I think the mm-hmm. most important thing was to have a team we put together who understood that this is the need of the hour and this is what will really bring about a change to India. So the passion behind the project was very important. No, but Akanksha, you know, you're trying to do this mind-blowing stuff. Uh, and like I said, go into the smaller towns. You're charging 999 rupees a month. Uh, you know, if I divide that... Uh, it's by 12, you're basically charging 83 rupees and 25 paise a month. 83 yeah. rupees and 25 paise a month for children's education. Once again, are you making any money from this? Uh, because you know, it has to be sustainable for you to continue this great cause of educating Bharat. So once again, I'm going to ask you that when you're doing this amazing stuff and you're trying to use Hollywood style animation and this that, and the other, how are you doing it for 83 rupees 25 paise a month? See, the same way, like I can I can ask an OTD platform how they're doing it, right? They they have movies that go out for crores and crores of rupees that they buy and then they put it on their platform and, and it's for everyone in India to watch at the same pricing. So when it came to us, it would be very easy to start a charity or an NGO which provided a lot of kids education, but we had to go and look at a self-sustaining model so that we could go ahead with it, you know, in the years to come. So there is a 999 plan, which is for videos and it's for the Z5 subscription.